G'day champions, we've got a lazy J, J20 here. A uh, little bit worried about these things because I've heard not great reviews from other techs. Basically, any, anyone that asks like $8,000 for a 5e3 clone immediately puts up red flags. But, you know, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It's a little bit concerning that this, this one's blowing fuses and tripping earth leakage detectors in the customer's house. So I think something pretty dramatic has gone wrong. Um, it's it's pretty bad when you, you're tripping the ELD in a house. Um, something, there has to be some kind of design oversight there, but it smells a bit smoky, which is not promising. So um, the customer's willing to put some coin into this thing if, if there is anything major major uh, gone wrong. So look, we'll just uh, dig in, we'll have a look and, and not count our chickens before they hatch. Now, the most astute amongst you, well, the uh, the really switched on guys might have noticed that this is going for the Fender Tweed look. <laughs> so, it's essentially a deluxe style cabinet and chassis uh, with a few little surprises, which I'll show you shortly. Now, a quick look at the control panel, and it's just your standard 5A3. Kind of fair. Ah, right when I'm, right when I'm doing a video, Old mate decides to mow the lawn. Here he is. Panny boy doesn't like him either. <laughs> well, it's got linishing marks on the chassis, but not in like a tasteful way. It's uh, it looks pretty rough, and there's like streaks going across it, so. I think this is just an off-the-shelf chassis. I don't think these guys build these things. I've got no way of proving that, of course, but it looks like the low-quality chassis uh, that you get from eBay and stuff because uh, they advertise a variable voltage um, circuit, like a MOSFET, London power scaling style sort of setup. And if you're going to do that, why would you put it in the ground hole? You'd, you'd make a dedicated silk screen for it, wouldn't you? So We've got padding here, but it seems to have kind of buckled the, the back panel out a bit so now there's a little gap and uh, we'll have to see if they've got any shielding on the back of that cover. Now as soon as we look at the back the plot thickens so <laughs> we've got a nice celestial blue in there but we've got two boxes either side with two knobs on each. We've got a foot switch with two switches and two knobs. We've got two what look like 6L6s so uh this and well and down the bottom we've got a reverb tank so uh it's not your average 5e3 now i would have liked to see some kind of wafer head screw there instead of just the countersunks shoved into the uh the tweed you can sort of dig through over time uh so either like a cup washer like the modern fenders or a, a wafer head screw would have been a, a better choice and I know they've got the wafer head screws because they've used them right there on the chassis, so why not just use them on the back as well? So you notice that's a wood screw. You'd think for this budget point they'd do what I do and uh, put a put a metal machine threaded insert into the cleat so you're not just relying on the timber to hold everything together. Um, over time those holes can ream out and uh, just machine screws are a nicer way, nicer yeah, touch of quality, you know, touch of class touch a touch of paradise you know just realized that the uh, international community may not get my john farnham based jokes oh well moving on all right champion so what are we dealing with here uh so there was a ground wire coming from the input jack to the Shielding on the rear panel, which is copper foil. I'll uh, just snip that off. We can have a look at that and either reconnect it or find a better way of doing it. Uh, you've got power scaling over here. What I might do is get a um, get a deluxe schematic and sketch on it uh, what the differences are and the modifications and whatever. And uh, you know, it's not it's not theft of intellectual property if you reverse engineer it. Uh, uh, so we've got 
that pot up there controlling this MOSFET with the power scaling over to the left there. Um, we've got what looks like a pretty typical deluxe setup, but there's little bits and pieces added on. You've got a cap there that's unraveling, film's unraveling. You've got two 6L6s, one of which is touching the speaker, so that's fantastic. You've got two jacks here, one of which is for the speaker and the other one uh, is also the speaker. Okay. And then you've got a third jack over here, which must go to uh, to the foot switch or, or whatever this situation is down here, which we'll get into shortly. So none of the film caps have values on them because, you know, it's super secret. No one's seen a fucking 5 a 3 Deluxe before, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it looks like they've got, what, uh, Tube Amp Doctor there, F&T here, and some other off-brand for the preamp supplier filter. Um... You've got a 270 ohm 5 watt cathode resistor. You've got a nice V shay 22 mic uh, cathode bypass for those output valves. You've got a switch over here, which does fuck knows what because there's no labels on anything. Uh, but we'll suss that out. There's a cap across it, so it might be a bright cap or something. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll draw out all these things on a deluxe schematic so I know what I'm looking at. But the main issue is. Uh, this power transformer's leaked its guts. It's got it's spewed out um, burnt resin, and it stinks in this area. So, looks like we're going to be replacing a mains transformer. There's something new. I've never seen a fan on a 5e3 before. I, I wonder. Okay, we'll get into it, but I wonder if um, they've used the wrong transformer and it overheats. So their genius idea was to put a fucking fan facing the transformer like transformers don't have fins they don't really get that much advantage from from airflow like that's the only thing that fans blow an air at it's literally it's got the transformer right in front of it so it's not like generating a nice amount of airflow for the whole amp or anything it would have a bit of air circulation through but it's uh it seems like it's pointed directly at the transformer for a reason so back to the suspicious looking brown boxes down here uh i guess eight grand gets you a silver texture on a box <laughs> not not sure if it had a shield from the factory but it doesn't have one now so this is a tremolo and it's linked up through two glands one there one there up to the main chassis and then that goes to what appears to be maybe a bias driven trim i'll suss that out i'd say it's it's probably pulled from a princeton or whatever and over the other side you've got a, a reverb driver box it's got a uh, like a preset looks like a preset pot in the middle there with a flat blade screwdriver adjustment uh, reverb and tone and you've got a reverb driving transformer you got more wires that disappear up into this time the back side of the chassis um, and you got two extra valves on the back there so this makes me suspicious uh, because if they've used a transformer designed for a deluxe uh, as opposed to like a, well, even a deluxe reverb, um, they're going to be abusing that transformer quite a bit. Um, they're meant for six V6s, which have like half the heater current. I, I can't remember the figure off the top of my head, but we'll look at the data sheets and schematic in a second. Uh, and they're also not rated for an extra three 12AX7s. Like, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that heater current adds up. And um, if a transformer's already built on the edge of, uh, you know efficiency <laughs> um it's going to be overloaded by that so i think what's happened is uh they've specced an undersized transformer for the for the purpose now this again puts us in a bit of a difficult spot this thing's too small and cramped to be able to mount anything but a similar transformer on it so we've got to find something with the same windings required like the five volt for the rectifier and and uh adequate current on the 6.3 volt windings um and also enough current to suit 6L6s, a pair of 6L6s running uh, in cathode biased, which is going to be uh, drawing quite a bit of quiescent current as well. So, um, yeah, I th yeah, I'm not impressed so far. Like, I try not to be negative, but for the money you pay for this thing, you get a off-the-shelf chassis, you get an underrated transformer, you get silver texture on brown boxes tacked on 
If you want all this stuff, go get a Princeton Reverb. It's essentially a Deluxe Plus, that shit. Like, I get that people love the Tweed thing, but the Tweed thing was reminiscent of a, a certain era of amps, and most of this stuff came after that. Like, I know you've got Princeton's that got tremolo and whatever, and I think they had reverb on some of the very last Tweeds. I, I don't know. Well, I'm not a Fender nerd, history buff. Um, but essentially what they've done is done all of this to make a Tweed-looking Princeton with 6L6s. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's not pass too much judgment until we dig a bit deeper. So now we're back into the position where we sort of can't really know what the issues are with this thing until we've fixed the main issue, which is the transformer failing. So I guess um, I'll just sort of give an estimate for that and then some possibilities of some other issues as well. So I've got to allow a bit. It's really hard to estimate pricing on this. And of course, every customer tries to pin you down to a solid price and you sort of can't um, unless the amp comes in sort of functioning enough to test it. Uh, I can't even turn this thing on until we replace that power transformer. So let's get into that and uh, let's just try and be positive. All right, champions, positive. Yay. Happy, super happy, good things. <laughs> 